Ball, first and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Seahawks. Sean goes right, has a cutback lane, and he does. He's across the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Here he goes. Are they going to catch him? 40, 35, 30. Touchdown, Seahawks! 12, they're bringing the trophy home. Your Seahawks, Super Bowl 48 champion. Holy catfish! Baldwin's going to throw back to Russell. He's got it! Touchdown! Seahawks! Are you kidding me? Let's hawk it out with your hosts, Kevin Porter and Rich Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hawk it out. I'm Kevin Porter, as always with Rich Harris. What's up, dude? Kevin, I'm with you as well, and uh, I think it's awesome that we're headed into our first preseason game this week. It's going to be, uh, what, this Saturday at Pittsburgh. I myself had a great weekend this past weekend, and I'm seriously stoked about all of the above, my friend. Damn, dude. We got, we got a lot to get into today, Ridge. We are packed. We got so much to go over. Let's uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and start it right off here, right at right at the beginning. We we pre- previewed this last week, Rich Harris. Tell me about your training camp experience. Come on, buddy, lay it on me. Yeah, man, this one was good. Like I said before, we've been to it a few times, the wife and I, and. Uh, this time we took a different approach. We got there really early. Um, for anybody that doesn't really know the full experience, I'll try to be as brief as I can, but as descriptive as I can. Um, it's in Renton. Uh, the area where you go to is a mall called The Landing, and uh, they do have the a parking garage. Uh, I think it was the last two floors, floors three and four. You could park in if you got there early enough. And and anyway, right close by, there's a pro shop, a Seahawks pro shop. You start lining up there a, a little bit before they start uh, allowing you to. And then they start scanning you. They give you wristbands. You go through metal detectors. Then you get on the line and you get on school buses. And these school buses take you to the VMAC, which is just up the highway there, just north on the 405, I believe it is there. Uh, and you go about a couple of exits up through traffic and everything, and then the school bus drops you off at the training facility. So this time around, we were on the first bus. We've never been on the very first bus, so we were on the very first bus to get to the VMAC. Uh, being on the first bus, we got to choose a really nice spot on that berm. So we went right into the middle, almost on the 50 yard line, um, just overlooking Lake Washington. And, uh, you know, that particular day, it was only, it was like 75 out with about a 10 uh, mile per hour wind. The Blue Angels were flying overhead. It was, it was really awesome. And uh, uh, ended up by leaving a little bit early on that one. And uh, it, it was just a new experience for us all together. It's a really easy experience if you ever consider going. Uh, to the listeners um, just follow the uh, the information that they provide and uh, they'll walk you through it and you ba- basically just follow the crowd and mind the rules and you'll have a great time but yeah it was awesome tell me rich how, how, how did you get on the first bus how, how do you, how are you uh, given such uh, such commodities within the you know this uh, situation here why, why 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 what happened what happened? We just fell into it. It was weird. And when we got, so we came down the parking garage, came down the stairs and just kind of came out there. We didn't know exactly where the pro shop would be because it changes sometimes, but it's still in the same spot it's been for the last probably five years. And uh, we kind of just came out there. There was already some stuff set up and some people in line, but they said, you know, you're not supposed to line up to you know till a certain time so my wife was like you know why are they lined up over there and i said i don't know let's just kick back over here and see what develops so we just went and got a little spot in the shade we both had our chairs so we're just leaning on our chairs and waiting and i said let's wait and the next thing you know the line started to develop and we both said okay now's our time we're not the ones breaking the rules we'll just follow the ones that are breaking the rules and we'll get in line (laughs) so what was i doing i don't know what was going on i was just here yeah yeah i was like fuck it i'm gonna let's now's our chance let's get in there and then next thing you know they just started calling uh uh or calling us over to register get the wristbands and all that and then they just start it's like a cattle herd you know they just start phases of it you end up by going through metal detectors they inspect they even inspected our chairs you know that we had to pull the chairs out of the bags but, you know because some people are gonna maybe try to hide beers in there or something i don't know um or a glock uh, <laughs> you know, hey you know. <laughs> i mean they ended up by having a beer garden at at this facility oh, and no most of the people went wow. there was it like 
like 80 people in there that were just drinking beer. And I was like, I don't even think there was any TVs inside there that showed what was going on on the field. They just came to training camp to drink beer at about, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. So like, yeah, hey, kudos man, to them. Five, it's five o'clock somewhere, dude. Somebody's got to crack it open, dude. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like quite the experience, dude. I mean, especially if you got, I know you went there with um, the, with the seafair going on in Seattle. So you had the blue angels flying across. Uh, damn, dude. It sounds like a damn near perfect day you had there. It was pretty cool. It was a lot of unexpected stuff. Uh, the weather, you know, the breeze, um, the first bus, even on the way out, we got on the third bus, you know, we kind of had a sense of people starting to get up. And I, I said, you know, do you want to do autographs this time? And she was like, no, nah, let's just, let's get going. You know, let's keep this, this speed pass going is what we were calling it. Let's just stay on the speed pass. And that way, you know, where we live, we, it, it's quite of a drive too. So it made our day a little bit shorter and more efficient. So we really liked it. We got back home and we were like, that was a really good day overall. We were efficient with the way we traveled and uh, all of the above. And we made some good observations, you know, within enough time, they had a lot of uh, scrimmages, so to speak there at, at that particular one as well. And uh, yeah, I definitely have some uh, notes that I took for those. Yeah, dude. I mean, what, so what, what were your observations? I mean, like, I mean, you got to see it close up. Dude. You got to see what the Seattle Seahawks are going to be, you know, this coming season. At least, at least a little bit of a preview of what could be. I mean, what were you impressed with? You know, what were your takeaways? I mean, let's break this. Uh, let's break this baby down. Well, first and foremost, man, I we had to get on our apps and pull up the roster, and because I was like, who is number? 31 who's number 36 you know and who's number nine because I, I i'm not as up on to speed on my numbers as i normally am because there's a lot of new numbers um there's a lot of new guys there's a lot of rookies and it's a big team right now right because we haven't had any cuts yet so with that said i'll, I'll start with the offense and what i witnessed with the running backs i mean ken walker obviously that guy our newest newest guy he went by kenneth walker i did see an interview with uh, i think it was k5 or something up in seattle he officially wants to go by ken not kenny not kenneth he just wants to go by ken now that he's in the nfl so ken walker it's a respectable, it's a respectable name dude. i like it i like it like so Ken, uh, speaking of numbers, he's number nine. You know, that guy is elusive. Uh, he's kind of a taller, leaner running back. Not lean, you know, he's, but he's not a Chris Carson. He's not going to mow you over necessarily right this time in point in his career. But he's got some elusive moves and he can cut really quickly. And he just was, you know how they said juke, you can juke a guy out of his jock strap. You know that old school term? Oh, I, I'm very Ken, aware of that one, yes. You're going to see a lot of that out of Ken Walker. Um and then again, looking at the numbers, the first reason we pulled up the app is I was like, who's 31? Remind me of who 31 is. Cause he just kept, they kept handing it off to him and he'd break through the line and just cut down the sideline and he was breaking them left and right. It was DJ Dallas. And I'm like, oh, wow. hey, we're forgetting about DJ Dallas. You know, DJ Dallas was He's cutting so it up. Yeah. He was getting a lot of cheers from the fans. They even have an MC there this time at training camp, which was kind of oh, weird. I think I think she was like a radio station host or something. And she was really good. So she was narrating sometimes. Hey, you know, uh, fans, that was DJ Dallas for a touchdown. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, and, and, so. And you got to say, though, right, like the defensive, the, the people that they're practicing with on the defense, I mean, they're trying to stop him. At that oh, for sure. Still, so that's his natural talent coming through, right? Yeah, because they got their defensive coaches yelling in their ear if they let the offensive do something against them, just like the same as the offensive uh, yelling at coaches yelling at them if the defense gets over. And they'll tell you, like even the MC was saying, the defense won that play, you know, so it was like it's a competition all the time. Nice not only just the, the players are competing for positions, but it's obviously the defense and the offense are competing against each other to make each other better. Um, and, you know, sometimes they'll fight a little bit, but didn't see any of that. Thank God. Seen a lot of dancing. Yeah. This ain't no 49ers training camp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen a lot of dancing. Uh, my wife really liked uh, Daryl Taylor's dance moves out there. Cause the music is blasting the whole time you're out there. I mean, the whole time it's just blasting. And uh, that's one thing that the players love about that facility. If they've never trained there before or been on the Seahawks is the fact that the music is just constant and they have a special DJ uh, I love that. that's just I love assigned that so to training camp. Yeah. It's like pumps you up. Dude. Music just like is so much. So such a, an essential thing in life dude so it's awesome to hear that but yeah, uh, closing up the running backs, there was a, a Thompson. I kept seeing a number 36 and I could see Thompson on the back. And I, I, his first name is Darwin. He, again, another guy that had it was explosive. And I was like, who's this Thompson guy? So I looked him up um, with the wide receivers. I mean, DK was out there, um, obviously. And when it was his tender to get the ball, 
it was like he was playing with people you know he would just kind of stutter a little bit and then just take take off like a track star you know right. and i was like yeah you know dk is just dk and uh so his speed was evident um we saw a gino pass to lockett lockett broke away and got away from the defense and the, the cornerbacks and he was clear all the way heading towards the end zone and, and gino just threw one of those rainbow type passes and it just landed perfectly in uh tyler's bread basket just perfect how many, how many yards out do you think it was i think it was about 35 40 yards oh that's nice it was nice. It was really nice, real smooth. Um, and then uh, Penny Hart, number 19, he kept standing out as well. And I think he was with us last season, but I think uh, mostly on the practice squad. We have heard the name before. Uh, there was a lot of completions between him and Drew Locke. Um, and Drew Locke looked uh, uh, pretty good, speaking of the quarterbacks. Gino showed minimal errors to me. Uh, he seemed to be more structured. And again, he knows the playbook. We know that. Uh, he knows the playbook more. He's been there three years. Drew Locke had a few little flags. I mean, they do have official refs out there as well, trying to keep them in check, right? Because they want to make it official. Drew had a couple of flags, a couple of false starts on his watch, right? Because it's his team. But, uh, you know, he's newer. It's to be expected. Um, his passes and everything had a lot of zip on. He's got this little sidearm pass that he does too, and there's really no effort to it. And uh, I've heard some of the press ask him about it, like how hard is that throw to make? And he said it's just a normal throw for him. But you'll see it when he when he does it. It's kind of unique. He'll throw one of those. Uh, he threw one, I think, yes, in the mock game to uh, one of the guys. I don't know who it was. A nice slant, a little dart. And uh, like slant. dude, slants are it's a very efficient pass, dude. It's a very efficient pass. And and that's something Russell Wilson really wouldn't do too too often. I don't know if it wasn't no, that he did, wasn't comfortable with it, or I often wonder why we didn't run slants more. I see these other teams doing those quick slants where you just have a guy just take off the line out. real quick. <laughs> yeah, bam, he's right there, dude. I do that well, in all the time, dude. Yeah, and that'll get us into the tight ends. I mean, when you got a guy as big as Colby Parkinson, you know how big that dude is. He's how big? Six. How big is he, Rich? <laughs> I was waiting for that, Kevin. Where is it? <laughs> He's 6'7", 251. And he is he is tall. He's got good, I mean, for a big, tall, tight end, uh, he's got good moves. He can cut really well. And, boy, get out of the way when he gets the ball, in my opinion. He's the second tallest guy. There's two other guys that are taller than him, what? both offensive what? linemen. And that's Stone Forsyth and Greg Eland, I believe is the way you pronounce his name. And they're both 6'8 at 307 and 321, respectively. Well, well respectively, of course. <laughs> Those are big guys, man. I mean, yeah. and 6'7 is the tight end, Colby Parkinson. And he's at 251. So, you know, he's a pretty big guy and he can move. So I'm looking forward to seeing him blitz giving him the ball and he all, obviously he said he does not mind blocking either and we're going to do a lot of double tight end sets this year it's my understanding so you're going to see will disley maybe on one side colby on the other side noah fan will disley you know there's those three guys are going to be trading in a lot in and out and it's my understanding they're going to use the tight ends a lot more in a lot different ways than they have in the past i'm pretty excited when you say that dude i mean I've always been a fan of the tight end position, like in Madden, dude, especially back in the day, like when you used to be able to create like every single character. So you create like the you create a character for every single position and you max it out. So you'd be like, you know, times a thousand, the best, you know, the Seahawks would win the Super Bowl every year, Rich. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And dude, yeah. I'd, always, I'd always make my, my uh, tight ends like seven foot tall, like, you know, like 350 pounds or whatever, 400 pounds or whatever. And just like, yeah, just maul motherfuckers all day, dude. Like, yeah. Speaking yeah. of a slant, speaking of a slant, just give it to the tall guy and let it, if he's big and, and, and rough, like a big tight end, you know, or, I mean, a running back. Just turn that tight end to a big running back and go from there. Smash people all day, dude. That's right. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, the O line, um, it's kind of hard to tell the O line. There's no pads on the practice that we went to. So, not really, couldn't really tell there. But Damian Lewis, you know, our returning guard, he looks really good. Uh, uh, the center, Austin Blythe, uh, he came from the Rams. So, he's really, really comfortable with our new leadership, our new coaching, uh, right. Shane Dickerson. And then obviously, or shoes Shane Waldron and Andy Dickerson from the Rams. So anyway, he's he's turned out to be a good leader. I understood, and you can kind of see that out there that he was uh, coordinating a lot of the guys and keeping everybody in line. And of course, that's the center's job. So it looks like we have a good veteran center with leadership out there, which is great. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, everything there was 
there was not really much more that I can say about the offense except for uh, everybody looks really fast. They're young, fast, and it's exciting to see that again. And there's definitely a different feel without like Russell and Bobby out there. But it's not a bad feel. It's just more of a you can feel that fresh start feel and that youth out there. And uh, you can see the I don't know. It's just, you know, the coaches and stuff have more control of the team. It looks like because there's again that that youth will get that because they're more open to learning and not necessarily just looking to the leaders on each side of the team. Yeah, dude, they're 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 coming in with a fresh start, man. Like you said, dude, it's clean. Uh, I'm I'm I've been I mean ever since they traded Russell Wilson, dude, I've been super excited about what the potential is for this team going into the season, dude. Because it's like, again, you know, we're not dealing with necessarily a rebuild; we're just dealing with a reshuffling of the deck. And I just I don't know, dude. I just you know, like you said, man, like it it, it has a good feel like going into you know the Saturday. I mean, which again, you know, we'll see the first preseason this coming Saturday. And we'll see how we fare, you know, which, which again, you know, I'm not holding my breath about the season. Like if, if it's a good season, it's a good season. If it's a bad season, well, shit, you know, we're, we were due a couple bad seasons, you know, knock on wood, but you know, you know what it, you know how it is in the NFL sometimes. Uh, but I'm really hoping for a, a real nice rebound from last year. man. Oh, for sure. And then preseason, I'm just looking forward to, like you said, I want to see this rust. You know, it's not really rust. It's it's the, you know, just the youth and stuff. I want to see the cohesion and how that's coming along is what I want to see. Just see how the team is. There's going to be errors. There's going to be mistakes. And that's how it's going to be. But hopefully they're limited. And that'll kind of give us a gauge of where we're sitting. And I don't expect a whole lot. You know, I expect to, to just support my team. And I just want to see where they're at. You know, that's what my big curiosity is about this uh, first game at Pittsburgh is just, to gauge the team and see where they're at. That's where my curiosity sits, you know, but people forget that we're definitely still a defensive minded team. And I, I think we really have a good defense and I think we have a good defense uh, brewing that we might not be aware of. I mean, uh, my observations on the defense, Kobe Bryant, our new rookie cornerback, a guy was everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. He was everywhere. I mean, I we had, again, looking up the numbers, we had to look up his number. I didn't write it down. I don't have it written, but I think it's eight because uh, uh, Quandary Diggs is number nine. So Kobe Bryant, I think he's number eight. Isn't that what the Lakers Kobe Bryant was? And I think he took the same number out of respect. So uh, anyway, he was everywhere. We could see him flying around, defending balls and all that. So very promising with him. Um, and then opposite him, Tariq Woolen. Now, we're going to get more into Tariq on, on the mock game, but Tariq Woolen is uh, another guy that's going to surprise us as a cornerback. And I think at least one of these guys, if not both, I don't know if both of them will be starting by the beginning of the season, but we might see one of those guys starting at cornerback. One of our rookies. I really, really feel that. Daryl Taylor, remember I was telling you earlier, uh, he's our defensive end. That guy is he just looks lean and mean, and he was uh, he was entertaining the crowd. He was dancing, just having a good time, but he you could, he's very vocal. He was the one that got into it with DK a couple of practices ago. They actually, like, they call it a fight. I don't know how much of a fight it was. They didn't show any of the footage or anything, but uh, he's a fun guy to watch. So he's going to – he was – uh, I understand in the mock game, he was uh, really, really on his top game at rushing the quarterback and kind of making the rookies look bad. Um, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it is good, right? But we yeah, we got to learn. We got to learn them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got to learn them and then we'll see his yep. talents at the same time. Uh, this uh, Uchenna Nuoso, I think they call him Chenna. He's number 10, and that guy, you can see him all over the place as well. He's linebacker. He came in from um, San Diego, I believe, and he's got leadership left and right. Obvious talent just stands out. Um, you're going to see a lot of that guy. He's going to help out our linebacking crew a lot, I believe. Might even do a lot of pass rushing. Um, Alton Robinson was another one of our rookies from a few years ago that we kind of forgot about, I believe, for injuries. He looks really strong and fit. And then I was looking out for my boy Jordan Brooks because uh, I got me a little Jordan Brooks jersey when I was up there as well. Yeah, going to be my newest jersey. Yep. Uh, nice. Got a little discount for going to training camp at the pro <laughs> shop. Um, yeah. he, I guess they were just resting him for a little hamstring issue. Um, and uh, yeah, I got to rest those uh, hammies. Get, get ready for pittsburgh dude come on man yeah that's right that's right keep him for the more important stuff and he's the leader he's the new bobby wagner on the team and as far as the linebackers are concerned and the, the overall defense and i'm looking forward to 
Jordan Brooks. But the defense, you know, we got to remember we got those two dogs back there too, like I always talk about. Uh, and I and I do consider uh, Jamal Adams a dog. I just want him to get his head straight. Uh, but you got Quandre Diggs <laughs> and head straight, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Get his fucking yeah. head straight. We got. He's a dog though, and he's got the talent. We know that. Quandre Diggs got his head straight. Always has had his head straight. He's a fucking dog. That guy is awesome. So really let's watch that defense develop and if we can have a good solid defense like we've had you know this team really the overall feel is the speed and the youth it's starting to remind me of something about 10 12 years ago uh when we were just developing and getting into that as well yeah and that draft that we had back then with it feels like this draft was even better than that in my opinion um so we've got a lot of rookies that we might retain for the future uh that's the way i feel that's the way it looks for me see that right there rich that's uh those are goosebumps on my arm from what you said about 10 to 12 years ago dude i mean we may have won a certain super bowl about you know nine to ten years ago so we're coming up on that that 10 year anniversary dude that's right and you get some you get some uh youth out there they're like hornets you know let me tell you remember how we used to attack with chancellors and browners and thomases and stuff like that let's see some of these guys that want to you know that are hungry want to come out there and win a championship for seattle dude that's what i want to see i want to see them come out there and win a championship for seattle washington son that's right yeah so the day after you went to training camp like you were uh, mentioning there we had the mock game up at lumen field so i don't know you didn't eat it sounds like what the cameras weren't weren't rolling on that necessarily. It wasn't something that was like necessarily broadcast. Was it, it was it was a broadcast online or? No, I think it was. Um, well, remember that image I shared with you, um, where that yeah. that eight K camera. Yeah, that eight K. Let's talk about that eight K camera, Rich. What's up with that thing, real quick? Well, see, when we used to go to training camp, I started going to training camp. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. They had like scissor lifts. And they would put the guys in those scissor lifts and they'd go up there with a camera and they'd have another guy with them to kind of help with the cords and help with the battery packs. And they would go up there and that's how they would film. I mean, they want to have the film of the training camp. That's part of how they go inside the front office and the coaches and they dissect everything and try to figure out, yeah, hey, you know, so-and-so, you need to do this better. You you didn't move to the left here when you should have went, you know, a little bit farther out or whatever they say, right? So that's, they want to always have that film to review. So those they used to that's why i was uh, took a picture of that one and sent it to you uh is because they used to use scissor lifts and these guys would go up in the scissor lifts and there was about three or four of them across the training camp well now they got this one big unit and the guy's sitting there under an umbrella and it said 8k across it Whoa. and i know that means you know that's obviously 4k is excellent but 8k i can't imagine how high def that is so he's in there he's tuned in he's doing everything you've seen the boom go up so he's got full visual he can zoom in he can get you know probably the threads right off of the football um later i found out on that i don't want to spend too much time on it coach when he was out for covid coach carroll they were broadcasting the footage to him live at his house and he was calling coaches and stuff and making suggestions Whoa, on you know he, he was basically coaching from home uh because he couldn't be there that's and uh century nfl stuff dude that's 20th uh, century nfl right there yeah so going back to filming the mock game i would imagine they had the same type of a setup out there for internal reasons so that they could go back and dissect the film and use it constructively to build the team and show where they needed to improve it and the way they do all that stuff so yeah that's about n- nothing that was televised to uh any- anybody outside of that and there was a small crowd there i believe and it was a really minimized game it wasn't true quarters true halves or anything like that but uh yeah in in the first half there i guess drew lock a lot of people were impressed came out did 12 for 12 on passes with the first team he was winning with the ones and they ended up with a touchdown and uh, a lot of people were pretty surprised by that not necessarily because he's not capable of it it's just because i don't know maybe it's just our first impression of what he's possible or what he's capable of doing yeah i mean the we're gonna see it i mean time will tell over the next like three to four weeks rich i mean we're we're gonna find out who's gonna be the starter whether that's Drew Locke or Geno Smith, man, but super promising just hearing the fact that Drew Locke comes out and goes 12 for 12, like you said, with the first team and getting a touchdown at the end. I mean, like, dude, that's, that's, I mean, again, not harping on last week where I came out kind of like wearing, wearing my colors, dude. I was like, you know, I got my Drew Locke jersey on already, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of ready to, you know, I'd like to crown him the next quarterback, but you know, time will tell, dude. 
Yeah. Well, that, these preseason games will be a good gauge for that too. That's what another reason I'm excited is I want to watch these guys play against other people. It, the picture will become much more clearer at that time. But uh, so yeah, back to the mock game and back to Tariq Woolen. That dude is six four. Um, he's like 210 pounds, but he's he's kind of like he's getting uh, references to and comparisons to Richard Sherman. He's an ex wide receiver like Richard Sherman was. Um, and so he's really turning heads for people. And, and in the mock game, I guess even guys like DK were breaking away, like maybe DK would have break, broken away from the coverage. But as the ball was in the air, Tariq Woolen with his 4.2640 speed is closing in on guys like even on guys and keeping up with guys like DK. So they said that was very noticeable. I wasn't there, but it was uh, witnesses that were there, fans and, and also reporters seeing that closing speed. And then he's really tall and lanky so he can get up there. He was defending a lot of balls. So again, another exciting cornerback uh, that we have a rookie. So keep an eye on those two rookies. I'm going to keep my eye, dude. And just to throw it back earlier, dude, yeah, Kobe Bryant, he totally did take the number number eight <laughs> with the Seahawks there. So he he is uh, honoring Kobe Bryant, the other Kobe Bryant. Oh, man. And he's he's representing, let me tell you, so far yeah. he looks really great. We're, we're, it's, I uh, hear good things about him, dude. I, I've been hearing a lot of good things. Like everything I hear, he's like, yeah, he's, he's living up to that. Like, and because it's like he came in pretty, like he was, like you said, like when we talked about earlier about him, like at a, you know, some, some of our mock uh, podcasts, I remember you just making the comment about how he was just like, he was up there in terms of like, because he comes from Cincinnati, right? The college, Cincinnati. <laughs> Yeah, I believe so. I got and, the like, roster he, up right here. But yeah, um, he was like he was like up there though, like in terms of like an all American or whatever, uh the, like the high atmosphere within the you know college realm. You talk we're still talking about Tariq Woolen? I was talking about that Kobe Bryant. <laughs> oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He played next to Sauce Gardner, right? And yeah, uh, not Tyreek Woolen. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. No, that's okay. Uh <laughs> but uh yeah, Kobe he played right next to Sauce Gardner, but everybody talks about Sauce Gardner this, Sauce Gardner yep. that. Yep, that's but Kobe's the one that won the award for the best cornerback in college. So, you know, he's he can hold his own I, and he's representing. I may he's need got to a get chip a on his shoulder. I may need to get a Bryant jersey, dude, number eight. <laughs> yeah. I may need, that may need to be my next one, dude. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Uh, and, yeah, he's going to be fun to watch. But at the end of the day uh, – Daryl Taylor, again, I touched base on that. He was rushed. His pass rush abilities are very evident. And then the obvious wide receivers, Tyler and DK, they're, they stand out. They're standing out like they always do. This Cody Thompson has been showing up. Um, and you heard me mention earlier Darwin Thompson on the running back. So you know, I'm calling it the tell of the two Thompsons because mm, I don't really, really know who these fucking right guys there. are, but they're. Uh, they're really creating a story here for themselves and they're standing out a little bit. So we'll see if these two Thompsons can make uh, the team and make the cuts and, uh, or at least make the practice squad. Cause I've definitely got my eyes on them. And uh, you know, one of them's running back and one of them's a receiver. So get the number straight. You'll know which one's which, uh, but other than that, keep an eye on those Thompsons. Damn, dude. You know, speaking of keeping your eye on certain things, dude, man, there's a certain Richard Sherman that showed up at Lumen field this past Saturday, dude. I mean, we saw the footage him meeting freaking Pete Carroll at the, at the, you know, the middle of the field there embracing after, you know, so many years of being apart, you know, and like, you know, reminiscing about old years past, I imagine. Uh, but nonetheless, dude, I mean, it's, it was exciting to see Richard Sherman dude Cause like, I, I, you know, I've never been one of those people that's like, that's like, you know, Oh, somebody goes away. You stop being a fan of them. You know, like, I don't know, given the fact that, yeah, he did go play for San Francisco. I, I, I don't know. I still, was a Richard Sherman fan, dude. I can't, I still have my Richard Sherman, uh, you know, Seahawks jersey. And uh, man, I'm, I don't know. I mean, he's still with Tampa Bay, I'd imagine right now, but like, damn, it was good to see him there. So, what do you think? You're getting a little bit of uh, a sense maybe Richard Sherman wants to come retire as a Seahawk as well? That'd be dope as shit, dude. I mean, like, dude, think about it. You just, you're just like going off about how we have all this young talent, dude. And like, I don't know, dude, Richard Sherman coming in and like helping build up this, this young group of, uh, you know, damn dude i mean that's i don't know dude i don't know dude like it sounds it sounds like a, a hollywood movie or something but it may have I mean, we may have a, a happy reunion in the future maybe well a lot of people think that uh he might have came around a little bit too a e little easier without russell wilson around because they didn't really have the best of the relationships either from that's what i understand true. yeah so but uh yeah obviously we're excited about that 
first preseason game, the 13th at Pittsburgh, and then I'll yes, be sir. at the second preseason game at home versus the Bears. That the one's Bears. on 13, excuse me, Thursday, the 18th. Okay, so uh, that'll be at home. So yeah, Saturday, so then turning around that next Thursday, we get the next game. Exactly. And then I'll have some more subject matter for our next podcast after that game. It's a little be a little bit more for us to talk about when I'm actually there, I think, because just the vibe and stuff you get from the, at the game. And then obviously you're going to see more stuff on TV than I will. And, uh, you know, vice versa when you're at the game and I'm at home watching on TV. So good to have both of those perspectives. But, uh, yeah, speaking of Russell Wilson. Uh, not Richard Sherman related, but man, I, you know, did you see that where Sue was at Sue Bird and she's playing her last game at Climate Pledge or possibly her last game unless they go to the playoffs? Yeah, no, I, I, this is actually, so this story right here that you, you brought up here about Russell Wilson, I, I, I am very, uh, I did not hear about this. So continue, please. Oh yeah. So, I mean, if you've got it pulled up, uh, let yeah. me know the details, but all, all I right. heard was that they had a, a presentation. I'll let you, do you have it up there? Yeah, dude. The so d- like you said, bro, WNBA legend Sue Bird is calling it a career. Okay. So apparently she's been in the WNBA for 20 years. Okay. Making 13 all-star teams and winning four championships with the Seattle storm. So yeah, like you stated, um, Russell Wilson shows up apparently, so uh, you got some quotes here off Twitter from Russell Brown, whoever that guy is. I don't even know. Uh, they just booed Russell Wilson inside Climate Pledge Arena, which, you know, he's got the emoji, you know, the guy's like laughing and crying, which, dude, honestly, that's how I would have reacted. Dude, like, he's going to get booed every single time he comes back to Seattle, and especially after the news came out of how he 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 did his dirty rich. He left he left because he wanted out of here. It wasn't it wasn't just because you know hey man you know it was like couldn't come to an agreement or something like Pete Carroll John Schneider wanted him here. They wanted him here, dude. But he he wanted out. Now he's all down there sucking ass down in Denver. You know oh I always want to be a freaking Bronco. Yeah, that's what you said about being up here too, bro. Well that's we right. saw what happened. We saw what happened. You you took off the first chance you got, dude. And I get it, dude. You were in a relationship for twelve years, man. How how long was he? It wasn't twelve years. How long was he? Like it was like ten years. When did he get drafted? Two thousand twelve. So it would have been ten years his last season, right? So he played nine seasons up here. Let's try. I'm pulling it out of my ass, Rich. I'm pulling it out. So I get it. I get it. He wanted he wanted out, dude. So, you know, I don't know. He's going to get fucking booed. And I'm glad that Climate Pledge of Arena, uh, you know, uh, uh, fittingly uh, welcomed him back. Yeah. And I don't know if he was I think he was on a video uh, uh, montage or something when they were having people giving comments. But either way, that was his presence back oh, in Seattle. He wasn't, like he was oh, he wasn't up. in Seattle. Oh, okay. I don't think I don't think he was there. In, again, I don't know the full story on it. I just wanted to he put that they on. They booed a, Russell Wilson inside Climate Play. So I just assumed that's right. I stop reading off that. So um, some yeah, random a news around video the message from Danger Russell. OK, so yeah, nonetheless. OK, so he shows up on a video board then he gets booed. So can't wait for Monday Night Football, dude. Right, exactly. And let's not count us out. Let's just have a great ball game and see how that goes. But yeah, other than that, man, the only other thing I had on here, which we've already had a... Uh, if you want, if it's even we're talking about the uh, a lot of teams, I don't know if people know, they're the NFL is letting us have alternative helmets now, and there's going to be about 13 teams, I believe, that are going to go ahead and debut those. I think you only get to use them in one game or something, but at least that's what the teams are announcing in certain games uh, mm-hmm. that they're going to use this new helmet. And then there's also alternative uniforms uh, coming as well. I haven't seen much news on the Seahawks for either one of those subjects, but uh, I'm sure that we're going to be onto it i'm sure that we're just focused on more important things right now yeah totally dude and like i don't know i think i we've we've always been pretty weak that if you want to talk about one weak part of the seattle Se- seahawks game it's got to be those those uh those alternative uniforms because every year all we get is like those solid neon green ones they could I, and I, I forget exactly what the reasoning was like because i remember hearing pete carroll talk about why they don't go with like you know the one the 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 uniforms from the 80s the jerseys from the 80s or whatever um you know some like real solid old school you know seattle seahawks stuff uh but for some reason they've always chosen that and i do remember hearing about them moving forward with more alternative uh uniform options um i'm all for it dude because like i mean look at the nba dude like dude every team's got like 12 different like alternative uniforms for those 80 games they play every year dude like it's ridiculous look at the oregon ducks yeah they're the ones that have uh, like a new uniform every every week yeah exactly (laughs) sponsored by nike yeah 
they're just like bro can we get one for like every single game it's like 12 like what 12 weeks of like yeah dude, right thousands right. and millions of dollars yeah dude nike owns owns that area man it's crazy how like I, you know not going off subject but i'm just gonna throw this out there but just so so crazy when you really think about all the like corporations that are really up here within the pacific northwest man i mean just naming nike and not going into anything else but that's that's going too far we're a seattle seahawks podcast rich so i don't want to talk too much <laughs> well i'm good uh kevin my friend how about yourself how you doing I, I think i'm good man um like you know we talk about this weekend this saturday it's the first preseason game so any any legit seahawks fan out there is like hype hype like a motherfucker dude you're ready to go so come this coming saturday like you said what, what time uh 4 p.m is it starting i forget yeah I forget 4 p.m out. pacific standard time okay. is what i'm showing here on this end okay against so- pittsburgh so yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta turn on the local radio broadcast before you gotta listen to the pregame there, and then you gotta watch the game. And you know, damn dude, I I can't wait till next week till we get to record next week's podcast, dude. Like I'm pretty I'm pretty excited, Rich. Pretty excited about football if you can't tell. We got some real football right here ahead of us it's in about what five days. Yeah, dude. All right. I'll say it. Fuck Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got a lot of uh, we got a lot, lot of payback. Like I don't know, we got a lot of payback, and the uh, preseason will work. I don't care. Let's get out there and let's, let's whoop some Pittsburgh there. and show them <laughs> Seattle Seahawks are still alive. It's the thir- first Pittsburgh game without Ben Roethlisberger, so just re- remember that it's a little bit of history there. So a little bit of history. So all right, Rich Harris, yep. I guess that's it for us this week, um, dude. Yeah, man, I'm loving it, dude. We'll we'll see everybody next week here. All right, all right. See you then. Talk to you guys later. Peace.